morning, Facebook Live again. Uh, this is Dr. Kaveh Elahiyun uh, from Optimal Care Wellness Center. We are going to be discussing uh, uh, stress, wellness, and everything that it encapsulates with a, a fabulous chiropractic doctor, Dr. Carl Longgreen from uh, Lima, Peru. Right, we are able to add Dr. Longgreen. There good we day, are. Sir. How are you? Hello. Hello, I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good to uh, see you okay. after 20 years. Yes, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it has. So please give us an introduction. Let us know what you do, where you are, and how things are done there. Well, I grad I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Grad went to chiro chiropractic school in Toronto and CMCC. Graduated in 1999. Be left, left Canada in 1999 to come down to Peru. Uh, Lima, I was here for a year, then I went to London, worked in London for a year, and then after London I, came, I was going to work in Spain and came back to Lima to practice my Spanish while I was waiting for paperwork. <laughs> Still here. <laughs> Great place to do it. Obviously yeah. you're missing Canadian cold weather, although you didn't have much in BC, but... <laughs> no, no, Vancouver isn't, uh, isn't too much. There we go. Vancouver is uh, a, lot, a lot milder than the rest of the country. Perfect. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Carl, if I may call you, can you please yep. uh, go in details on to what you're doing, where you're doing it, and uh, uh, what is your specialty when it comes to chiropractic and chiropractic care? Okay, well, how, how I see chiropractic is I see that we are specialists in focusing on proactive health, and the role of the spine, the role the spine plays in our health. So for me, it's not, it's, it's not just about um, symptom reduction. It's about what does the role, what, is, what, does, what role does the spine play in keeping us healthy and allowing us to do the things we have to do every day. So I live in Lima, Peru, been here 19 years, and I, I use network spinal analysis, is the technique that I use with my patients. Um, I focus on helping them understand that patterns produce the results of their life. So if they're able to change the pattern, then they're going to be able to change the result. And the pain means you have to change, you have to change the pattern. Because, it, I mean, every single thing that we experience is a result of a pattern. And the pain means review, it means stop, review and adjust mm -hmm. so and basically so, pain pain is a kind of an indication of basically the path you're taking and things you're doing are not working for your body yes yeah, so what i'm saying yeah what i try and tell people is that it doesn't mean you're wrong it just means that it needs to be updated like i tell people that if you were using an iphone 3 or an S samsung s3 an android you wouldn't be happy you'd be frustrated mm-hmm and that phone doesn't have any agenda against you. It doesn't, it's not trying to kill you. It's not trying to make you upset. It's, it doesn't have, it does not, it's not trying to do, it's just you're asking of the device something it just can't handle. Its operating system, its applications, everything was perfect for another time and now it's insufficient. So it's not wrong, it just needs to be updated. Okay, and I know you do loss with stress and how the body is affected by stress being mental, physical, and uh, emotional. Uh, yes. Can you please give us some more information about that and basically dive in deep? Okay, I'll just, we're gonna, I just got to get one thing and then I'll be... Okay, so what I do is I tell people my focus is, is if you think about it, what, how we focus how we move, how we feed ourselves is 90% of the, of the equation in health. So what I'm looking at is I'm going to be working on helping you see where do you need to make adjustments. First thing I want to look at is the spine. Is the spine, is the spine locked up in what I, you know, what I talk about the nervous, the nervous system and the autonomic nervous system? Because for me, if you look at any, anyone when talk about negative emotion, for example, there's always this 
you're always forward, you're flexed, you're contracted. Any positive emotion, anything that feels good, you go into extension. Mm -hmm. So to me, that we need to look for evidence of how that relates to the autonomic nervous system. Because the, so the sympathetic or fight or flight, the, the normal natural consequence in studies and stress demonstrate that, that you have reduced immunity, you have reduced regeneration, you have reduced cognition, you have a number of different functions because the body is focusing on staying safe. It's not focusing on staying healthy. So we have, our, our behavior has, to, or we, our body has to focus on staying healthy, it has to focus on staying safe. So it has, it, when there's a perception of threat, danger on the, on the outside, then priority is given to escape. But that comes with a price tag. It comes with a price. The body has to invest resources, has to divert blood, energy to the muscles. So, and we can, we can see that. We can see that in the physiology. So for what I believe, that I look at, okay, what is the manifestation of our psychology through our physiology and through patterns? That's a lot of the stuff that I look at down here. And so when someone, when someone lays down on the table, for example, I say, okay, right now you're not doing anything. You're laying down. Yeah. And I said, so your body is still tight and tense. Why is that? And I say, well, because I do. And I said, well, right now you're not at work. Right now you're not, a, you're not at home. You're not having a discussion. All the things that we could be causing the tension isn't happening right now. So it's, I mean, with this pen is in my hand. So my forearm is going to be tense. If I, let the for, if I let the pen down, should it take another 30 days for my arm for him to relax? No, you're right. No, it should just be in, immediate. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that our, our spine and our back is related to, isn't many, many things that occur are not voluntary. They're involuntary. Someone gives you good news, changes automatically without you even thinking about it. Someone gives you bad news, changes automatically without you thinking about it. So uh, the position of our spine is intimately related to our to our perception of our surroundings. And when we feel that we're under, we're under threat, then we, we are going to assume a posture. And I tell people that I don't believe there's anything called, anything like called bad posture. Every posture has a purpose. Mm -hmm. if, you fe if you feel insecure, you feel like you're not being supported, you feel like you have to protect yourself, you're going to assume a posture. And that's going to, that's going to come with a, with a cost, with a price tag. The body has to invest metabolically in maintaining that, that posture. So other things will be reduced because, and that, that was when I was doing a lecture just on last Friday. And I asked this, I was in a uh, university with students and I just asked them, I said, okay, if you have a bacteria in your stomach, that's dangerous, toxic bacteria. And there's also a lion sitting beside you. Which one is your body going to give priority? Would it be smart to divide your body's resources half to getting away from the lion and half to fighting the bacteria? Maybe not. No. No. You better no, run. A, <laughs> yeah, you, you better run and you better outrun your friend. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> because if you run the lion, it's so is our, is that the, our, our um, ancestors that survived were the ones that were better able to dedicate their body's resources to escape. And that's the, that's the price tag of the, of the stress response. It's, it was designed to keep us alive when we were surrounded by physical threat. But today we're not surrounded by physical threat. We've, we're so technologically advanced today, especially in you know, Canada, the United States and Europe, that there's almost, there's literally no physical threat but the threats are now emotional and mental. So when I look, when I, when every single person that comes into the office, I review, I check their posture I, and we take photos. We look at, is the posture returning to neutral? Because there's studies that demonstrate since the nineties that, uh, that um, less than ideal posture is related to back pain, neck pain, a number of different things. So the, the body is giving signals, giving signs of how things need to change. And what you're saying, your posture has a lot to do with your mental status and how you perceive yeah. the world too. Yeah, because what I tell people is that what this articulation won't articulate, the other ones will. Mm -hmm. you're, you can't, you, the body doesn't lie. 
So when you, if I, if I put, if I, if I do this, I'm all crunched up and someone says, are you happy? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm fine. I mean, I said the words, but I'm not communicating that I'm fine. We don't, you know, studies demonstrate that communication is 7% verbal and 93% nonverbal tone and gesture. Wow. Profound. So yeah, you're saying a lot without saying anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and I could say to someone, you know, I could say, yeah, I love you. You don't believe me. Yeah. Said the words. So, the, so a lot of the times communication is explicit and there's an implicit and explicit component. So, Doc, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to stress, obviously our body goes into a fight or flight response and yeah. it does what it does to survive the stress or yep. perceived stress for the body. Yeah. What are the side effects you have seen of this chronic uh, uh, fight or flight or chronic stress in the human, human body? Yeah. Well, excellent question. For me, that's what I look at is that, uh, you know, stress and how I first off is I first help people understand how I define stress is not traffic or relationships or different things. What stress is, is a body response to a perception. Because another person could be in the same cir circumstances, same conditions, and they don't react the same way. They don't activate the stress response. But when the stress response is activated, the, co the, co the consequence is that you reduce your level of immunity, so then you would see immune dysfunction. Mm. You reduce the, le the focus of the body on regeneration, so you would see degeneration as a consequence. I tell people degeneration isn't a cause, it's a consequence, it's a lack of regeneration. And why? Because you diverted resources to something else. Wow, strong point. Yeah, to me, we need to, re we need to reflect and we need to look outside of the profession and, uh, and, when, uh, and see what's, what we've learned in other areas and then bring that back in to reinterpret our principles to help us move forward. Because principles never change, but applications do. And for in the well, 21st century, yeah, sorry, in the 21st century, I believe we need to move past um, a model of maintenance and restoration because if, cause that, mean, that means I put you back to before you were when the event occurred or the trauma. And the thing is, is that you, weren't, you didn't have the capacity to handle it then, so you're not going to have it again. What we need to do is look, is look today more like health with, like you would with a cell phone where you don't do a lot of uh, restoration. If I restored your cell phone, you'd be upset because you'd lose all your data. The things that we look for now is updates and upgrades, not maintenance and restoration. We need optimization and actualization to realize our goals and dreams. So today, you're not, you're not taking your phone to the mechanic or to the repair person less than 10% of the time. But constantly, you're having to update and actualize the operating Required of the day. So we need to be looking at a, how we now focus on, on health in a new model, a new way of perceiving things. Because the 20th, 20th century, we basically, I look at it as health, we, we use models of our advanced technology to interpret. So our, we looked at things in the 20th century like a car. You maintain, you restore, you repair. But today, the most advanced technology is, is, in, is in your pocket. And you don't do maintenance and restoration and repair more, more than 10% of the time. You do optimization and actualization to be able to realize the tasks of the day. So we need to be reflecting on how, okay, and so then how does it, with that new understanding, how does that affect the way we do things? And are our techniques and our applications up to date with that with that new understanding. You know, Dr. Carl, yeah. um, what you say is quite valid because to be honest with you, uh, as you know, and um, where we have graduated from, what the, the way they had taught us is really different than, you know, some of us do practice. Yeah. So uh, I came to realization that 
there has to be more than just correction because as you mm-hmm. said correction then you go to the pre uh, stress form and at the pre stress form you didn't do too well with the stress no so we are not doing you any favors no no what what i do what i what i see i look at it like this is that <clears throat> what we when you're correcting you are doing a service you're doing a favor you're helping but you're only reaching a certain point because if you think of it like this the if the if the position of the spine influences the function of the body then a position that's inappropriate is going to have is going to cause inappropriate function mm. and that's going to cause problems over time so fixing the position is going to improve function but my well, my point is and was what i saw with patients and practice members is that is the position the primary or is it consequence of something else mm. and position is a consequence of pattern when you have a perception of threat it's like if, if i have my arms tight and maybe i and i get tired and still threat bring back up again the chiropractors have seen that they that if you have to constantly adjust the same area there's a pattern the body's doing it for a reason so if i understand it right sorry to cut you off there if i understand yeah, it right you're saying the what happens is our physical domain has a lot to do with our emotional and mental status and how definitely. we perceive stuff definitely i what i look at is i look at what is the manifestation how is our psychology manifested through physiology hmm. and the see the spine is integral in coordination of that and i believe that there's empirical evidence when you look at when someone gives you good news you you straighten up when it gives you bad news you go down you're never going to find somebody depressed upright and you're never going to find somebody that's ecstatic and you and euphoric all kind all pulled in like this mhm we recognize people's emotional emotional states by the postures they assume and if they can't change their posture they can't assume that state that state of emotion it's funny that you uh, mentioned that because the new research shows that type a personalities and pessimists do develop cardiovascular disease and ultimate significant health problems sooner yeah. than later in population oh definitely the thing is because i see i think that this i think because another thing that i focused on for most of my life was looking at evolution in an undergraduate i was i was in biochemistry and studied evolution of vertebrates evolution of plants and evolutional theory and that kind of stuff and i like to evolve so i made me think of the evolution of the nervous system and so then the brain so the first thing that like, and if you think of it as just a cell a single cell if it's in a toxic environment one that doesn't support its growth it contracts and tries to escape and then if it's in an environment that's nutritive and supports its growth it expands so our body is a multicellular organism it still it still has has to do the same things as a single cell it has to be able to eliminate waste has to be able to get in nutrients it has to be able to reproduce so then when you reach a certain mass of cells the ones on the inside of the mass don't know what's happening on the outside so then something had to be created to communicate and when if someone studies embryology they know that the nervous system doesn't come from the inside it comes from the outer layer of you and comes inside yeah its role was to, is to is to communicate from the cells on the outside to the cells on the inside how to coordinate their function according to to the environment that it's in environment is key the people are learning that now when it, when they're thinking about genetics and looking at epigenetics and how that the the environment is signaling which genes you need to activate and which ones you turn off so perception is really really important And I believe that what goes on is that the first thing to form when you're looking at vertebrates is the spine and spinal cord. It grows from the bottom up. Yeah. And so the most primitive parts would be the ones that were the, are probably the most stable because they've been around the longest. They've had the longest time for evolution to work on them. So it's not the newest areas, the like the frontal lobe that's that gets got that's really got it all worked out. It's the one that can make the most mistakes. Mhm. 
And so then what I, what I see is, okay, so if there's a perception of threat, danger, then how, then the spine has to have a, or the body has to have a way to, to divert its resources and shift its focus. So I look at the spine like a switch and see, okay, where's it going to? What's it directing towards? When, if you think of when you go, if the, if, if the spinal cord is, is attached here in the neck and then lower down, when the spine goes into flexion, the, the, the canal gets longer. When we go into extension, it gets shorter. So it modulates the tension on the cord through the dentate ligament. And so then you'd have changes in, 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 pre, in tension on, mem, on cell membranes, which would be co changing how, they are, how their receptors are going to work, how their biochemically are going to work, what receptors can enter, what, which ones get turned off, a number of different things. I mean, it's very complex and has to, we need a lot of studies to work on that. But it's fascinating thinking about it. It certainly is. Definitely you mentioning it. Bring back a lot of embryology and that definitely is true. Now, in today's world, obviously, I don't know if you guys face it down south, but up here, you hear often, Doc, there's nothing wrong with me. I don't need the adjustment or, you know, they get treated. Once the pain goes away, oh, I'm good. Mm -hmm. And I try to tell them it's a lifestyle in which one too has to adapt to the right. proper functioning nervous system and mind-body connection to be perfect. Yeah. Now, yep. in today's environment, obviously, the stresses mm -hmm. are plenty and we have a lot of excuses to blame everything from our neighbor's dog all the way to politics about those stresses. Yes. But what would be a few points that you can uh, let our viewers know about eliminating stress or okay. changing the view where you see the world. Yeah, yeah. for me, that's a really a key thing because when I, I do a lot of talks on stress in businesses and things, and I say that um, I think in the United States, it's like 300 million, or no, 300, but I don't know, the, I don't remember the number, 300 million or billion, but there's, ton, there's a lot of money spent on stress management. Mm hmm and I said, well, that's, that's really kind of silly. What do you mean? And I said, well, management means it never goes away. Think of what the word means. The word management means we're, we're going to be moving it, but it's never going to disappear. Mm -hmm. So we need stress resolution, not stress management. And then we need to look at where does stress come from? If, stress is some, if, we, if we think stress is something that surrounds us, then we really don't have any hope. But stress is come when this is why this is why I look at the definitions that we utilize and say that stress is the is the body's response to a perception. So if you perceive that entity or situation as as dangerous, then you activate the appropriate response to that perception. And that has its consequences, which mean as it when it's active, your immune system is lower your digestion is lower, your regeneration is lower, your sexual function is lower, all the things are gonna shift because you're now moving towards how do I stay safe, not how do I stay healthy. You're, you're, you become myopic in how, you, in how you view the world. You go back to, if you don't have any new way of developing new strategies, basically you go to what, you, what already worked in the past, so you, stay, you stick with what you know. It's harder to embrace anything new. So what I'm, looking for, what I'm looking for is, okay, so how do we resolve stress? And this thing is, is that if you felt capable of handling the situation, you wouldn't be stressed. So the, the solution to stress is education, is training, competency. Somebody competent in something and feels like they, have, they, can, take, they can do something about the situation and, and, and it will have a positive outcome. They don't, they don't get stressed. They take action. So they don't manage it, they conquer it. Yeah, well, because that's because you resolve it. By, have, by having a change of interpretation of your situation is how you resolve stress. And how that's do you do that? Let's say, you know, I come to you mm -hmm. and say, Doc, I seen, I know, come up with a scenario that it was traumatic to me. Right. How do you change the trauma from the perception that I have a perception that's positive or yeah. okay 
this is, that's an excellent, for me, that's an excellent question. The first thing I'd be looking for is, is you can't change a story that you're defending. So first off, you have to be in the, if we have, uh, this is why when I'm working with network spinal analysis, I'm looking at, okay, first, just let's get back to the present. So if, I, if my forearm, like that example of the pen in my hand, the forearm's tight, I take it out, it, it shouldn't, it should relax in seconds. But let's say it still stays, it's still tight. Well, I'm not going to talk about what did you have in your hand. Mm hmm I'm going to say right now there's nothing in your hand. So whatever, whatever caused you to, to have your hand tight is no longer there. So when it relaxes, when I see the body come out of that pattern of protection is when it's now ready to reinterpret. Because it's no longer defending the story. So if you and I are having a conversation, we first have to be able to, okay, I'm going to put how I believe or what I think here mm -hmm. and, look, and look at this through new eyes and saying, so what we, a lot of times what I do to myself is that I tell people is that the qual quality of life is dependent upon the quality of question you ask yourself. So if you ask yourself a question like, why is this happening to me? Then your mind is going to try and give you an answer. If you ask yourself, what's wrong with me? It's going to look for an answer. And it's going to tell you you're too short, you're too fat, you're too skinny, you're too, you're too, you're too dumb. You're, it's, going to t it's going to look for an answer, it's going to compare and contrast and then give you an answer. And it's not going to be pleasant. If you're able to ask yourself a question like, well, how did this serve me? What did I learn from it? What did I get out of it? What did I get to avoid? How did I benefit from that? Because, every, because anybody who has, a, who has wisdom to share it came from a wound. People who have never had, never had any experiences that were difficult really don't have much to share in conversation. So the first thing I'll be doing is, uh, is looking, okay, everything that hurts, if you, you can receive too much support and that can be damaging over time. You just look at overprotective parents. The kids mm. aren't prepared. The kids aren't prepared. Yeah. Soon as they, soon as they're, as soon as they meet a, a situation that isn't supportive, they don't know what to do and they lose it. So you can have too much support because love isn't all support. Love is support and challenge. You know, learn talk look from Demartini, and what you want to see happening then is then is giving the, the, the giving them the space so that they can say, okay, this hurt, this caused these different things that I don't didn't want or did, or that I didn't want to happen. And what I wanted didn't happen, these things, but then also what happened as a consequence that actually benefited me. And when you can start to see that what hurt helped and what also helps can hurt, mm. is when you start to have it, that's when you start to see a shift. And then as soon, and as, soon as the person sees it, you'll see their posture change. It's really cool. So, so it's basically, do, sorry. No, so, what I, what I, so to get back to your point about helping people understand that, um, and what I do is I tell them what, not what they're supposed to do, but I just tell them, okay, these are the options you have. You can come here whenever you're in pain and try and get out of pain and, and then go back to your life. That's fine. So but what happens is, it, is your autonomic nervous system is dividing your resources between keeping you healthy and keeping you safe. And my point of view is that your energy, and you're talking in simple terms, your energy is going to go into your activity, your daily activities, and then it should be going into your recovery when you sleep. But it also goes to your protection, mm -hmm. according to your level of, of the level of worry. So if you're anxious and you're depressed and different things, and you're going to use more tension, that's going to divert resources. So then you don't have as much available for activity, and then you don't have much available for recovery. So don't be surprised if you start getting sick. Because disease is feedback. It's feedback on the quality of your habits. Not every time, but most of the time. Wow. And this is, these, are the things, these are the concepts that I, that I work with teaching, teaching practice members and helping people understand is that because if, if we don't do that, then they don't have control. You want to see, and if we, if we want to improve 
conditions for everyone in society, then we we'll, then we have to be able to give every single person a, a more sovereignty and more sense of control over their own lives. And that requires becoming independent, not dependent. So fostering dependency or maintaining dependency, better said, isn't going to help us move forward. Well, unfortunately, in the, today's day and age, I don't know how it is in South America, but in North America, as you know, we never fix anything till it's bleeding, hanging, or needs stitches. No, no. So, that, yeah. And unfor it's unfortunate that uh, I try to uh, describe to people that uh, uh, our spine is the only one that we have. You can't get an implantation for your spine. No. People pay more attention to their teeth, brushing it, flossing, going yeah. to a dentist, than they do to their spine. Exactly. And that, but that's, the, that's the attention I bring to them. So, so I don't tell patients that, um, that people don't take care of anything. I say, yes, they do. I say, what do, you, what do you value and what do you take care of? Why do you do that? Well, I don't want to suffer. Right. It's the same example so you, you, I use. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So you want to use those. So, so, so I don't, so I don't say, um, this isn't happening. I just say, okay, where is it happening? So create references and then bridge with values. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the, then they have to make the decisions. And it's like with raising kids, you gotta let them fall down. You know, the, the issue is, I always say that you don't wait till you're blind before you go to a, you know, optometrist, or you don't mm -hmm. wait till your, your tooth is decaying before you start brushing. Or you, your tooth will never yeah. tell you, listen, I'm decaying. Can you take me to a dentist? Same thing to your spine. No. It never exactly. tells you fair warnings. Normally when the pain comes, it's already too late. Damage has been done. Now we are in recovery mode. Yeah. And the, and the thing is, is that d dentists went through the same thing. A hundred years ago, people didn't go to the dentist for any prevention. They only went when they, had a, they, only went when they were like teeth falling out. And it, took, and it took a campaign of dentists. Remember when we were in school... I know that when I was in, in school, they'd have them come around with the little pink pills and you had to chew them. And then you see, oh, well, look how much plaque I have. And, you know, there was through the 70s and 80s, there was uh, campaigns done by dentistry to help people understand the value of prevention mm -hmm. and, be, and being proactive. And so that's something. So helping people, well, I, this is what I look for is okay. So I ask them, what is it you want? What is your greatest goal? So if your greatest goal is to watch Netflix, then you don't need to come here on a regular basis. Because you don't, you want to speak, what is your greatest goal? What do you want? And so then if I, if I want to keep my, my body and my ability, because responsi responsibility is ability to respond. If I want to have my ability to lift my kids and play and work and do different things, with minimal impediment and maximum performance, then I need to be checking before there's a problem. And I need to be looking at things. So I tell people that if I, if I have a Ferrari, I don't, and I rate and I race it, I need to put gas in the, in the car, or I need to put petrol, or I need to put fuel in the car. I need to drive the car because if it doesn't get driven, it's, and then I also have to check it, check it on a regular basis and can make sure everything's, mm -hmm. Everything's working properly, up to date, and, and in, in its place. So those three things. I said exercise, nutrition is great, but it's not enough. I tell people we need alignment, exercise, and nutrition. If you want to get results. So what are you aligned with? And then how are you feeding yourself? This is what you know, in Spanish. I, it worked, but I just say, so how are you feeding yourself? How are you moving yourself? And what are you focused on? Because where your eyes so when go, you, you say, go. So when you say aligning, you mean your body and your mind? Or yeah. are you talking about more of a spiritual level? I'm t well, I, basically I talk on all, on all levels because my, my point of view is that you, first off, is that you have, three, uh, in my opinion, three basic, causes of, three basic causes of pain. Because when, you, when, they do, when they do, based on interviews with people that were basically on their deathbed, in their, you know, when they're older, their, biggest, their greatest pain was their regret, was their regrets and the things they didn't do. Mm. So if, when, you, when you get to the end of your life and you realize you wasted your time, that's going to hurt. Wow. 
And then why didn't, and so why didn't you? Well, you obviously didn't feel competent. So what the one, one cause of pain, your ultimate pain is going to be waking up and realizing you wasted your time. Next, if you know what you, if you know, or what brings you joy, what fulfills you, what you're born to do, but you don't feel competent enough to do it, that's going to, that's going to hurt too. If you don't feel competent, then you're going to, then you have one or two choices, distract yourself or educate yourself. So then though, if you distract, if you choose distraction, then you're going to be out of the present moment. And so then I look at if you're, if you're not present, you're going to have pain sooner or later. And if you don't feel competent to, to, to realize your goals and dreams, make the th do the things that, you, that are going to bring you, make you feel fulfilled and happy, that's going to hurt. And then you're going to, what you're going to do is you're going to look to, to cover that up, induce a sense of satisfaction with some external factor or agent. And that's basically what we call addiction because addiction is looking, what the studies are showing is addiction is related to the search for connection, not just the biochemical. And then, so I look at these different sources of pain and create, how do I create the conditions for a person to first oh, get back to the present? Once, they re, once they're in the present moment, they have their eyes open. They have, they have a new way of, they can reinterpret their, their circumstances. Because it's not about not having resources. It's about not being resourceful. Mm. So when a person has a new way of seeing how they can utilize their resources, then they have, then they have a road that there's a road, a, a road appears in front of them and then they can start taking action because happiness is a consequence of progress. And what I mean by progress, not, you know, not, uh, I mean by expression of your values, growth, if you, whatever you value, if it's a relationship or, or art or work, whatever it is that you invest your time and energy into, if you're not expanding, you're not going to feel good. So, so these kinds of issues I'm trying to bring their attention to and say, look, I can help you because your spine is integral in allowing you to make that happen. And it is so profound that you make that statement, to be honest, and it should not be taken lightly that no. as a chiropractor, we are more than your back and neck specialist kind of thing. Definitely, there definitely. is there what controls every possible cell in our body is our nervous system. Yeah. And what more profound effect can one make than affecting and making sure your nervous system basically functions in its full capacity? Exactly. For me, it's what I, what I tell people is that your nervous system coordinates between your belief system and your body. You, I, I tell people you have a box of beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know, it has, a, has a, a ceiling, a floor, and walls. And the floor is your standards, the ceiling is your limits, the walls are your values, and your, be, and your behavior is limited to that box. Oh, wow. Your, your behavior. Wait, wait. Doc, can you please repeat that again a little slower so our viewers okay. can get the whole, whole uh, idea? That's awesome. That's beautiful. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So what, I, what I, I look at, you have a box of beliefs, and that is your permitted behaviors. That's what you allow yourself to do, and it's limited by the floor is your standards, the ceiling is your limits, and the walls are your values. Inside that box is what you allow yourself to do. But what happens if the behavior that your life requires is not inside the box? Because your be our behavior has to satisfy our personal needs and our environmental demands. If the behavior does not satisfy the environmental demands, we will be damaged. And what I mean by that is even just something simple as I have to sit on this chair properly, otherwise I fall over. So the, 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 the external world puts a demand upon us that we have to meet. 
And if we can't, then we're dependent. And so then we need someone else to do it for us or help us. And then as we, as we age, evolve, as we pass time on the planet, our needs also evolve. It may be, because you may be in your mid thirties and, and, or maybe you're, maybe, or early twenties and you want to just get a job. And then later you want a job that, that provides a decent income. And then you're like, I don't know how much money I get if I don't feel fulfilled, if I'm not, my time and energy isn't going to something that adds something to the world, you're still not going to want to do it. So there's an evolution of human needs and there's also a constant changing of external demands. So that box, if it doesn't contain the behaviors that are going to satisfy the two, well, then there should be feedback. And then that fee and so what happens is that you have to be able to update the box. And this is where the emotions kick in. So that, because it, when you, because the anger is about limits and expectations, sadness is about standards and boundaries. And I'm, sorry, what do you mean hmm. anger is about limits and standards? Ah. Okay. I, so I'm sorry. I know that we are taking this in a whole different direction, yes, but it's so know, fascinating. And, and, yeah, I, I, to me, it's super fascinating. And so, so I look at it like this. Think of like anger. When does anger occur? When expectations are not met. Mm -hmm. And expectations are, ba are, are, also are related to our limits, what we will and won't do. If someone violates our limits, it doesn't meet our expectations, anger emerges. So then our emotions do one of two things. We either use them to transform our story, which is rarely done, or defend it. We're experts in projection, but we really don't know how to feel our feelings. Mm. So now, this is what I've been looking at is, okay, so this is the box. How does the box evolve? How does the box change? How do I, how do I create the behaviors that I require? So by experiencing my, my feelings, by being angry without a story, by being sad without a story, by being embarrassed without a story, I shift. When we justify, rationalize, and explain, we actually guarantee we don't change. Because we just created a story why we don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Kind of cool, huh? It's, to be honest with you, and, I'm and just me, absolutely taken, taken by it. I really have. And, so, and to me, the, all of this is intimately related to the, to the spine. Every single emotional state, your spine, your spine, is, is, your spine is related to your, con your state of consciousness. Your spine is related to, to your behavior. Your spine is related to your sense of identity. Your spine is related to your emotional state. Your spine is related to, to he your health function, your body function, looking at the autonomic nervous system. You name it, it's connected to it. It's connected to everything. It's, 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 it's crucial to how it's coordinated. Yeah, yeah. It even means so, how you behave to your ex external environment, obviously. Right. So then for me, I look at, okay, our behavior has to satisfy our personal needs and environmental demands. Needs evolve. Environment changes. So then the behavior, the, the box has to be able to, to, to evolve, to adapt. If it's not if it's if it's not safe to ex to be to express your anger or your sadness or your embarrassment at the moment, well then, you do, we do one of three things with our emotions: we either experience them, or we project them, or we repress them. So if it's not safe at the moment to to feel the anger of someone that did, that that violated my expectation, because most of the time resentment is a sign of is is a sign of, of um, immaturity. And that's a key one to pick up to, to get. So you know what, Dr. Carl? Why? Well, we get you trouble? just opened a whole new can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> um, because hmm. I, uh, Dr. Frank, actually just uh, kindly mentioned that it's it has become the, the the whole mindset has become more of a crisis care as opposed to healthcare, true yeah. healthcare. Right. So we like to take care of it. Once it's done, we forget about it. Yeah. And, and the thing is, for me, no, because for me, the things that I most value, I mean, if I think of it like this, imagine in a relationship, if I said to you, you know what, I really like you. 
I'm going to do everything in my power not to treat you bad. Right? Huh? No, no thanks. If you said to a, if you if you were if you wanted to date somebody and you said, you know what? I'm going to do everything I can not to treat you bad. <laughs> they'd say, they'd say, ew. I was expecting something a little, little higher than that. And this is what I'm like. I, this is what I look at with health, and I say, I'll tell people, just because you're not sick doesn't mean you're healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, from you're, I mean, you're in Canada. I'm in Peru. If I'm not in Peru, it doesn't mean I'm in Canada. True. All I have to do is be outside the border. All you have to be uh, is on the edge of sick, and you're not sick. Yeah. So you met your you met your goal. So when someone tells me, what, as I ask them, what do you want? Do you do you want to be functional? Do you want to be able to maximize your opportunities, or do you want to be comfortable? Just not just not sick. So if you don't if you don't want to be and, and it's not and it's and I and it's not up to and this is what I had to also learn myself is that it's not up to me to decide for them. It's up to me to present the options. Very true. And, and and not even judge them because I've also had to go through my own thing, my own learning curve. Because there's things that I didn't value, that I had to lose, and I had to work my butt off to recover. And once I did, I took better care of it for a while. Until you and forgot then, again. <laughs> until you forgot again. Until yeah. until you actually just go wait. I'm going to dedicate time and money and resources to maintaining this asset, to maintaining this 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 thing that's important to me. It's just like any relationship. In the end, everything is relationship. Mm. How you how you relate to that situation, person, or circumstance. And if you so, um, hey, you try to control it, you're going to have problems. Try, you work you work to dance with it and see what see how you can add and what and also what can be brought to you you have a different you have a different outcome well to be honest this uh, interview definitely is way more fascinating at least to me i i mean i there's so much i want to ask but i know your time is is limited so yeah. I like to thank you for for devoting this time all the way from Lima, Peru. I I'm grateful for it, and please do promise our viewers that you will come uh, sometime soon, and we will dive into more of the oh, emotional I would, status. Yeah. I would love to do that. This is this to me is fascinating. I love seeing how we relate because for me we need to integrate, and I really I I, I appreciate the opportunity to share. With, with you and with your listeners. Oh, oh, oh. We are grateful that you did. In closing, yes. give us one uh, exercise that we can do to make us more grateful, to bring the positive self out uh, from within. Hmm. One exercise. First thing I would say is breathe. And not just, and and you don't tr you don't try to change anything. You just go, how am I breathing? Am I breathing into my chest? Am I breathing into my di into my belly? And instead of trying to change something to fit a model of what you think is appropriate, be honest with yourself. Where am I really at? Right now, am I nervous? Right now, am I tense? Right now, am I? And then when you admit where you are, the door opens to move somewhere else. Well, Dr. Carl, I am grateful for your uh, knowledge and thank you for joining us. Uh, oh, my pleasure. I appreciate I really your enjoyed time. It. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Another perfect time. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.